the uh, question for today is, will the Maui fires be a wake-up call on public power? You know, it's, it, we saw this with PG&E, right? They, they, they wanted to transfer millions, hundreds of millions of dollars out of their profits into the pockets of their CEO, their senior executives, and via dividends through their, you know, to their investors. And so they, they cut back on, on trimming trees and, and uh, burying power lines in areas where there was big wildfire risk. And the result of that was, among other things, the Paradise Fire and a few others that killed a whole bunch of people in California. PG&E got sued for this. Uh, they're having to pay out something like $5 billion. I mean, just massive amounts in uh, these lawsuits. Well, if the public reporting that we're seeing is accurate, and, and, and keep in mind, this is, this is uh, early times, this is tentative. We really don't know for sure what happened or what caused these fires. But that said, you know, there is video of power lines going down, arcing, and, and appearing to ignite fires in, uh, in, in Maui, uh, you know, in, the, in this town and others in Maui. And if that's the case, and, and it's also being reported that Hawaiian Electric, the uh, pretty much sole utility for the entire state, all those islands, that that electric company had no plan to shut off power in the event of high winds, which is nuts. Now, why would that be? Well, you know, there are two kinds, when it comes to power companies, there's two kinds of companies. There are private for-profit companies and there are publicly owned, uh, you know, for the benefit of the people companies. About uh, a quarter of the electricity generated in the United States comes from these publicly owned companies and the rest of it comes from privately owned companies. Uh, you know, when Reagan came into office, it was around 50-50, by the way. There's been a real privatization binge over the last few years. So what's the difference between the two, between a private electric company and a public electric company? Well, the main difference is the incentives. The private electric companies are re essentially required by their corporate charters and, and arguably even by law. I mean, if you look at the, uh, uh, the Dodge versus Ford uh, state Supreme Court uh, case that came out of Michigan back in the 1920s, um, you know, which said that a, a corporation's first obligation is to its shareholders. And this, of course, was, you know, uh, 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 Robert Bork's big theory that became kind of the animating principle of the Reagan administration. I write about this in uh, my book on monopolies, The Hidden History of American Monopolies. So private companies are looking at profit. Public companies are looking at what's best for the public. They don't, they don't make a profit, so they don't have to worry about profit. Private companies typically pay their CEOs millions of dollars. Public companies hire good technical people and pay them, you know, $100,000, $200,000, but, you know, it's not absurd. Private companies typically give less service. When it comes to, actually, when it comes to power companies, then, the, you know, the numbers are in. Um, with regard to uh, the specific uh, private companies, uh, privately owned power companies suffer an average of 150 minutes of lost power a year. For customers of publicly owned power companies, it's only 62 minutes a year. In 2019, fully 40% of all the power generated by publicly owned companies came from renewable sources. Uh, right now, about 49 million Americans, one in seven, I guess not 25%, that would be, what, around 15%, I think, or... 12%? I, I can't do that math in my head that fast, but 49 million Americans, including large cities like Austin, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Los Angeles, Seattle, as well as over 2,000 communities across the country, get their power from public power companies. And on average, they return more than 20% more to their communities in, in uh, you know, revenues and, and, and product than do private companies. I mean, it, it only makes sense. So, Back in 2015, Hawaiian Electric, this privately owned company that runs all the power for all of Hawaii, was talking about selling themselves to a big, a giant utility out of Florida. The deal ultimately fell through, but in the year or so that they were led up to it, uh, 40 legislators and councils, uh, county council members met at the state capitol uh, to come up with legislation on this. They were led by uh, uh, Chair Chris Lee of the Energy Committee uh, in the House. 
the state house. Uh, a group on Oahu formed was called uh, Kulolo, keep our utility locally owned and locally operated is what the acronym uh, stands for, but it's also the name of a kind of fudge-like Hawaiian dessert made of taro and coconut. Uh, the city council chair, Ernie Martin, put forward a resolution for a feasibility study. On the Big Island, citizens and legislators formed the Hawaiian Island Energy Cooperative uh, its members included a whole bunch of uh, well-known names in, in Hawaii, and they even hired a PR firm to sell the idea to citizens. And on Maui, the uh, mayor of the city of Maui, Alan Arakawa, uh, was very serious. He awarded $70,000 to a consulting firm, Guernsey, for a study of the viability of trans transitioning from uh, you know, private electricity to a municipally owned utility. But the deal fell through in 2015. But now, you know, I think it's back. Um, State Senator Angus McKelvey, a Democrat from Maui, was talking about how the privately owned Hawaiian Electric Company, this utility, um, has not been burying cables the way that they should. He said they fight it tooth and nail. Uh, there's zero excuse in my mind why power lines in Lahaina uh, shouldn't be underground now. No amount of money should be a reason not to do it. He says, the consequences of the fire are beyond measure. I hope this will be the mother of all wake-up calls. People need to have comfort that this won't ever happen again. So, you know, I'm saying good luck. Here in Portland, I was actually doing a local show on the air here uh, before my national show uh, on KPOJ here in Portland back, what, 10 years ago or so, so Sean? Sean was producing both shows at the time. And... Um, uh, our uh, local electric company was owned by Enron, and Enron was going down in flames, and the electric company was up for sale, and the city of Portland scraped together the asking price. That, in fact, they had a little more than the asking price to sweeten the pot, and they wanted to buy the, the, the company from Enron. But Enron refused to sell it to the city because they didn't want it to be, they didn't want this utility to be publicly owned. They wanted it to continue to be in private for-profit hands. It's the, the kind of an ideological thing, I guess, because they, they actually got less money, I, if my recollection is correct, than they would have gotten from the city of Portland. But, you know, hey, they didn't have to sell it to a city. So Portlanders got screwed. I mean, we've, we've had, we just are constantly having power failures and power outages here. Um, our neighborhood had a terrible one just a little while ago, and, and they strung a temporary high-tension line um, through the trees. I mean, we actually screwed it into one of the trees in our neighborhood to give power to our, our little neighborhood, our 22 homes. And, uh, you know, now we're just holding our breath when the winter winds come. I mean, <laughs> this is what happens. But PGE, which is the, now the for-profit company here in Portland, has to come up with $6.2 million in annual compensation for its CEO. And last year it paid $158 million in dividends. So, you know, they can't afford to upgrade my neighborhood. Uh, this is why Hawaii needs to move on this fast before the for-profit companies start circling around Hawaiian Electric because their stock, which had been trading between $30 and $40 a, a share for a decade or more, is now trading at $15, $13 a share it was yesterday. And Wells Fargo just issued a report saying they expect it to go to $8 a share. At that price, Hawaii could buy their power company and get it for a, a discount. It would be cheaper than what it's worth. And the reason why the, the, the stock is in the tank is because they're expecting billions of dollars in lawsuits from people who died in the fires, just like happened to PGE. So now is the perfect time to make this transition for the state of Hawaii to buy this power company and make the transition from private, for-profit power to publicly owned uh, electricity.